This is a free sample lesson from my new upcoming course, the Motor Racing Checklist 2.0. More info in the description below. If you look around on the internet, you're gonna find a lot of attempts on dividing the corner in many stages, sometimes five, six, seven steps. I don't believe these explanations work because they're too complicated. So I have created a simpler way to divide the stages of a corner and we're gonna use this structure during the entire course. We will have four stages, early entry, late entry, early exit and late exit. These stages only exist when there is cornering and braking involved. The hard braking phase is not taken into account. If a corner is flat or there's just a slight lift of the throttle, the approach will be different. We will discuss these corners in detail later in this course. Some corners will have a hard braking phase in a straight line to control the speed. This is not true for all the corners. There will be many corners where you were already pretty close to the ideal speed. In these cases, you only do light braking while already turning into the corner. For these corners where there is no need of braking hard on a straight line, we will start right away on the early entry phase. For the corners where there is a hard braking zone before, there are gonna be the hard braking phase and then the early entry phase. Now let's talk about each phase. Early entry is where the initial transition from peak braking should start. This is where the first degrees of steering angle show up and the weight transfer starts shifting backwards due to brake release and outwards due to steering. On early entry, we are releasing the brakes and adding steering. Do not keep fully on the brakes while turning or keep the brakes at a fixed pressure, never. Also, do not reapply the brakes if the car is gaining rotation. One of the most common mistakes at this stage is initially turning the steering wheel too much or too quickly. We want to slowly transition the brake release to the steering input as if we're pouring a liquid from one cup to the other. In simpler words, trying to reach too much rotation that early in the corner will cause the car to either too much understeer or too much oversteer. And you're going to spend the rest of the corner trying to fix the problem instead of going fast. Remember that we're talking about early entry under braking. If you're turning into a corner where we're going flat, then you should turn in a lot more quickly because there's no need to slowly transition from braking into turning since there's no braking at all. This is also one of the most dangerous phases of the corner because of the bigger tendency of the car to oversteer because of the heavy load on the front tires and higher speeds. And in case the car is rear wheel driven, high engine braking effects. What you do on early entry will determine all the next phases drastically since each stage depends on the previous one on a snowball effect. Late entry, this is the second half of the entry phase or let's call it the second quarter of the entire corner. We are still under braking, the speeds are still getting lower and lower and we're gaining more and more rotation. This is the build up to the peak rotation that we'll reach right before we start accelerating. Late entry is where we generally make the big mistake of doing a passive driving where we understeer and wait for the car to rotate. If you spin a lot of corner exit, there's a big chance your root mistake that causes the spin is in the late entry phase. Because this is where we tend to hesitate and not get the car to point, not get the car to rotate as much as the car is capable of. And whatever rotation we fail to achieve here, we will have to compensate later in a later phase on corner exit. The late entry is the final build up to what I call the maximum rotation point, one of the most important concepts you're gonna learn in this course. A good late entry will depend on a good early entry and a good braking phase. So in order to even practice a good late entry phase, you're gonna have to nail the previous phases and be consistent with it. Because if you're bringing a different speed on entry all the time, then mid corner, you're always gonna have a different sample to test with and your testing is not gonna be consistent. You're never gonna know what is the difference of what things you do on the late entry phase if your early entry is always bringing a new speed into that area. The early exit phase starts when we start accelerating. It starts at the peak rotation, which is the MRP, the maximum rotation point, which means you should not gain any extra rotation from that point because rotation will always be inversely proportional to speed. Your speed is going down, your rotation should be going up, 
then we reach the maximum rotation point we start accelerating the rotation should start going down as the speed goes up again although you should never gain rotation in this phase you should still have a good bit of it so don't just unwind the wheel too quickly because if you do it you're gonna lose rotation at the early exit phase and you're gonna have to compensate that at the late exit phase because the early exit has still a lower speed than the late exit so if you unwind the steering too quickly on early entry you'll have more rotation to be done at the higher speeds which is the late exit and the car might not be capable of doing it anymore this is where the understeer snap oversteer problem starts you understeer on early exit because you're not being aggressive enough in power or you're just being a little bit afraid on early exit and then you try to force rotation later into the corner because you realize you're going wide and you lose the car in the late exit phase so almost a hundred percent of the understeer snap oversteer moments happen in the same way understeer on early exit oversteer on late exit always late exit this is where we just reap the consequences of the previous phases late exit is the phase where we have the least control of the car because it depends on literally all the other phases so if you think you're doing everything right but you only lose the car on the exit then you're probably not doing everything right on the phases before on the late exit the speeds are higher the rotation should be decreasing more and more and more and we should reach peak acceleration let's do a quick recap of the biggest characteristics Characteristics of each stage on early entry the speeds are higher the rpms are high still a lot of heavy trail braking the car tends to oversteer a little bit more and it's one of the most important phases because it determines everything else from the next stages late entry the speeds are lower the rpms are lower much less trail braking so the car tends to understeer a little bit more on early exit you start accelerating the speeds are still low so you still should get a decent amount of rotation but not gain rotation it's safer to push for rotation than late exit though and late exit the speeds are high you don't have a lot of room for corrections because you're already going wider towards the exit the car does not accept gaining rotation at all and there's a big danger of going off if the previous phases were bad early entry and late exit the extremes of the corners are places to be careful with generating too much rotation because the speeds are higher late entry and early exit are the places where it's safe to force the car a little bit more so you can find the limits and feel the limit of the car especially when learning a car or track don't worry too much about all these stages this is just an introduction we're gonna be talking about these phases throughout the entire course i'm gonna talk about it again to make sure that you really understand the way i divide them and how each concept will apply and how we're gonna divide the appliance of these concepts depending on stage don't worry about that for now and if you want to get the full course that's upcoming in 24th of November, you can just buy the 1.0, which is already available, and you're going to be automatically assigned to get for free the new online course, Motor Racing Checklist 2.0. See ya!